Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to World Title Fight Week on the Gold Coast. This week, of course, we have this huge fight for the IBF Cruiserweight World Title between the champion Myris Bratis, who joins us here from Latvia today, and Australia's own Jai Opatai. You'll see the action on Wednesday night. It's live on main event television. You can access via Foxtel or KO. And of course, you can get to the venue as well, the Gold Coast Convention and Exhibition Centre, for a huge and historic night of boxing with Jaya Pattaya, Australia's own, challenging for the IBF Cruiserweight World Title against the champion, Myris Bratis. Ben Damon is my name. An absolute pleasure to be here for today's press conference. Looking forward to seeing everyone tomorrow at the weigh-in as well from midday at the venue. And then we have the fights with the action commencing on main event from 7pm Australian Eastern Standard Time. It's all brought to you by D and L Events and just to uh, talk a little bit more about these two fighters in the main event, Myris Bratis, a three-time world champion, the best cruiserweight in the world, the reigning IBF champion of the world, a record of 28 and 1 with 20 KO victories. He is a proper fighter and we're blessed to have the Latvian star here on our shores. We all know Jaya Pattaya, 21 and 0. He's been around the top of Australian boxing for a very, very long time, and this Wednesday night, finally, he gets his shot at a legitimate world title. History will be made on the Gold Coast, and we cannot wait for all of the action on Wednesday night, but today we'll talk to all of those who are involved in this main event. The co-main event fighters are here as well, and it's great to see Isaac Hardman and Bo Hartas at the front stage for their big fight as the co-main on Wednesday night. I'll start with the promoter of this event, Dean Lonergan from DNL Events. And Dean, it is extremely exciting that finally, after all of the negotiations, all the talk and everything that's been done behind the scenes, we are here. We're just a couple of days away. Saturday night, the fight is live, of course, on main event. It's certainly taken a little bit of time. We started cutting this deal, I think, way back in um, maybe September, October last year. And uh, the boys from Wasserman were very good to get the deal done with. They, uh, they certainly don't come cheap, I can tell you that. But... Uh, we got it done, then we went to announce the fight for the first time and unfortunately Myris got uh, COVID. And then of course we had our, our uh, a delay on our side when Jai had some uh, injuries to his ribs which were incredibly significant. I've got to be honest, I cannot believe we're sitting here today uh, mainly because of Jai and his recuperative powers. I think without doubt this is maybe Australia's toughest boxer or maybe Australia's toughest athlete full stop uh, having seen some of the adversity he's had to overcome. You know, he's fought for five years with a broken hand and he did it to keep going because he needed the money to fight and it wasn't until we realised how bad it was, you know, going back about a year and a half ago, we sort of forced him to go and get it fixed, he didn't want to. And then uh, here we are, finally, he's, he's totally injury free and the injury that he had only seven, eight weeks ago, I thought was catastrophic. Jai again had surgery on that, um, on that rib injury where his cartilages have been torn away from the bone. It is probably the most painful injury one can have and for him to be back here, ready to go for, uh, for Saturday night is nothing short of astounding. Of course, for those of you who don't know, it is Jai's birthday today, 27 years of age today, and uh, two days out from the, probably the biggest night of his life. I think, uh, I think this is going to be an absolute war. You know, the only loss that Myris has on his um, resume is against the current heavyweight champ of the world, the unified heavyweight champ of the world, Alexander Ursek. He lost that fight uh, on points, and... Um, so, and it's fair to say that fight was an absolute war that, like this one's going to be. You'll notice uh, over the next couple of days, Jeff Fennick will come out and start talking about his time with Jai Abataya. He rates Jai as one of the most skilled boxers, if not the most skilled boxer to come out of Australia. And also uh, the one with the granite chin. You know, we know for a fact that Jai, at minimum, this fight's going to go 12 rounds. And uh, I think you're going to see Jai Abataya come to the fore in this fight. You know, Myris at the moment at 37 years of age. It's come to the end of his reign, you can't go on forever. And Jai, as he said on a number of occasions, is incredibly hungry. And uh, that hunger is going to, you know, it has been feeding him, I can promise you, for the last six months. I've never seen Jai in such amazing shape. Once upon a time, he'd come in and he'd have to lose four or five kilos, six kilos sometimes to make weight. He's pretty much on weight now. Uh, he used to be gaunt, now he's looking fit and strong and healthy. Uh, it's a credit to a combination of Mark Matthew and Mark Wilson, uh, who, you know, who have done the conditioning and, and, and the boxing work with them. I'm just looking forward to what I think will be an absolute war. I have total confidence in Jai and his ability to come home and bring it home for Australian boxing. And a long time ago, five years ago to the day, um, Jeff Horn beat Manny Pacquiao on July 2, five years ago. And I think the same is going to happen here with Jai. The one difference is Pacquiao was a great superstar and obviously an all-time great at boxing. But I'm pretty sure at the time he wasn't the number one welterweight in the world. Right now, we've got the number one undisputed number one welterweight in the world sitting across from us, and I, uh, sorry, uh, cruiserweight in the world sitting across from us, 
and I think this is the exact challenge that Jai needs because every time Jai, uh, we put an opponent in front of him, he steps up to the plate and just keeps stepping up and stepping up. So uh, it's, it's as big a test as he can possibly get. And uh, I think you're going to see a, a great Australian champion on, uh, on, on Saturday night. Yeah, Saturday night is the fight. Really looking forward to it, Dean. But uh, you mentioned that it's five years to the day this Saturday since that incredible performance by Jeff Horn. A bit of synergy for Australian boxing. Just talk to us about how big an opportunity this is, both for Jai Pattaya and for the sport in this country. Well, I think, you know, in particular for Jai, you know, he's, um, he's had a number of fights. And he's, thanks to Fox Sport, you know, we've had him on TV for quite some time now, three years. And Fox Sport have been incredible in uh, helping put this fight together. So I've got a great thanks to them and all, of course, all of our great sponsors, whether it be, you know, whether it be Palmerbet, whether it be TEQ, whether it be Major Events Gold Coast, Red Rooster, Phil Murphy from Oxmar, they all make this possible. This, I think this will be one of the single biggest victories Australian boxing has ever seen. Uh, certainly from an underdog point of view, I think the, the, the betting lines at the moment, Jai's at about $2.90 domestically, which would put Morris at about $1.30. Um, you know, I just think significantly Jai could become currently the only male uh, world champion that we have in this country on July 2, and I think he's hungry enough to do it, he's got the skill set to do it. You know, his pedigree is, is unquestioned. He uh, went, was the youngest boxer ever for Australia to be selected to go to the Olympics at 16 years of age, competed, you know, very close to his 17th birthday. The pedigree that Jai Abatai brings to the table is nothing short of incredible, and what he has clearly articulated is that he is incredibly hungry to, uh, to, to have the win. You know, Myris comes and Jai's words with his belly full. You know, Morris has been on an incredible journey through his boxing life. He's made a lot of money along the way. He, he gets his inspiration apparently from Crocodile Harry, I'm told. Would you believe that? I thought it was all bullshit, but uh, we did some Googling and apparently Crocodile Harry comes from the Baltics, did inspire Crocodile Dundee. Who would have thought? But uh, I think this will be the end of the road for Morris. This will be his last fight because once you've been a world champion at 37 years of age and when you get beat, it's fair to say you, uh, you probably don't want to carry on, especially to someone who's as hungry as Jai, who hits as hard as Jai, who comes into this fight injury-free for probably one of the first times in his career. And I'm looking forward to my good mate Keller here saying, Dino, you were right. Jai Apatire is the real deal. Dean, uh, of course, people can watch Saturday night's event on main event via KO or Foxtel, but there are still some tickets available. Tell us about those. There are tickets available. We're at the Gold Coast uh, Convention and Exhibition Centre. It's an amazing venue. There's not one bad seat in the house, and uh, tickets are available at Ticketek. So feel free, if you haven't got your tickets already, to jump on board and come along to see what I think will be one of the great, all-time great uh, fights that we see here in Australia with two guys who don't take a backward step. I think it's going to be an all-time war. I think you're going to see a lot of blood, you're going to see a lot of gore, and you're going to see some amazing boxing skills. And we have an amazing undercard as well. Uh, a lot of people commenting on just how good it is. So uh, looking forward to Saturday night. It'll be something special. Thank you very much, Dean Lonigan from DNL Events. Uh, I want to welcome Callis Sowland from Wasserman, who's joined us as well. Great to have one of the world's biggest promoters here in this country as part of this enormous fight on Saturday night. Callis, welcome to Australia. Um, you must be excited about bringing a star like Myris down under. Well, first of all, um, good, good morning. Thank you for the absolutely um, great welcome. Uh, we straight away noticed what a fantastic sporting country that is. You, uh, this is. You can't walk uh, past a, a restaurant or a bar without some sport going on. Um, so it's, it's, we promoted all over the world from, I don't know, most recently in, 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 in Asia, a great fight, in, Inouye versus Don Air. We've done fights in the Middle East, obviously in Europe, in England, Eastern Europe, uh, Vegas, all around the world, but it's our first championship fight in Australia. Now, I'd love the, I've done a few fights with Don King, but that was one hell of a speech there. I feel like we can already pack up, leave the belt and go home. Um, yeah, no, there's a, there's a little thing in between the belt and, uh, and Jay at the moment, and it, happy birthday, Jay. Uh, and that's, that's this man here. Uh, it's a man who has been, uh, who's done it the hard way, he comes from a country called Latvia, um, a country of three million people. Um, someone who I met many, many, many moons ago uh, in our training camps in Berlin, where he basically came over and boxed with our world champions, uh, Alexander Povetkin. Um, he went and did Klitschko training camps and, and really had to go through it the hard way. He didn't have a big promoter behind him. Um, and he won his first world championship in Germany against Marco Hook who had, I think, 13 world title defenses. So that's how he won the world championship. He then went on to fight in two world boxing super series, winning the second one, legendary fight against Uzik. Still a lot of people split today who won that fight. 
And we're talking about a guy with pedigree. When we talk about pedigree, this is a three-time world champion. Not once, not twice, but three times. And I can assure you the belly is still very empty and he's still raring to go. Um, he could have stopped very easily after winning uh, the Muhammad Ali trophy. It was a great time. If to hang up the gloves, that would have been it. He wanted to go again, uh, sign a new deal to extend his career. Um, and he is here to take care of business. And then we go off and unify again. Um, that's what we're here for. Um, sorry about that, Dean, to, uh, to, to put pay to your plans. But, um, you know, I believe in there's always a step up in your career. And Jay's taken a big step up Saturday night. And to b give him and his team credit, he's taking it against the best of the champs. So um, whatever the outcome, credit to you guys for taking on the real champ at this division. This is the number one in the division. This is the real champ. There's a few other champs out there, but this is the, uh, this is the one who's recognized by the Ring Magazine, as I said, three-time world champion. And we can talk about chins being tested. We can talk about how strong someone is. But to check a granite chin, it needs to be checked. And I think they'll question themselves the night before the fight, have they been in at this level? Have they had their chins checked at this level? Myra certainly has. So good luck to all. Uh, we want a great fight on Saturday night. I'm sure we're going to get one. Uh, and I totally agree with Dean on one thing. This will not go the 12 rounds. Thanks so much, Cal Salland uh, has summed it all up from the Raiders camp, no doubt at all, and great to have uh, these people who are so prominent in global boxing here in Australia for this magnificent fight that we'll see on Saturday night. Going to talk about the co-main event just briefly, and at the far end of the table, Bo Hartas uh, has joined us. He's 6-1 and one as a pro. He takes on Isaac Hardman in this fight, and Bo, uh, great to have you here with us today. Uh, how exciting for you to be up the front with all of these famous faces on a big show like this. Mate, uh, yeah, I am. Hi, everyone. Thanks for turning up. Um, I can't say how grateful I am to be on the best card in Australia this year. So, yeah, thank you very much to everyone involved. But, um, yeah, really excited. And with an opponent like Isaac, he uh, comes to bang and can fight. So, yeah, I'm ready to go and keen for a, a good fight to put on. What do you think happens in this fight? We've all seen Isaac Hardman a great deal. Not too many have seen too much of you, but obviously you come with confidence. What happens here? Mate, yeah, a bit of a surprise package. Um, I can box, I can bang. I've got pretty good feet, pretty smart. Um, I'll go wherever it needs to go and very confident of getting the win here. I train my ass off for this, so let's go. Fantastic. Thank you, Bo. Looking forward to seeing you in the ring against this man, the head splitter, Isaac Hardman. Great to see you back. Isaac, how's your preparation been for another big show like this? Yeah, it's been good. It's, it's great to be back on Foxtel. Um, you know, I've been here since 2019 and that's how I got all my traction and I jumped off the platform to go fight on a website and that didn't go well. But um, it's good to be back here in a press conference that's organised and me and my coach are excited. We don't have to fight our way out of this venue um, like last time. So press been good. Sparring's been good. Um, I'm just excited to get in with uh, Bo over there. Dean said if I was going to carry on like I normally do. And I can't actually um, fault Bo, you know. I, I had a look at him. There's not much on him, but I searched Facebook and I seen him punching down six VBs in 60 seconds, you know, in 2012. And, you know, he's got a sick mullet back then. Now he's got a ratty, you know. I can't knock this bloke um, I will Saturday, unfortunately, but I'm sure I will share a few VBs after too. So um, I'm excited to be back here on this stellar card. You know, I've got Joy over there. I look up to Joy and soon to be new world champion, Midas. Um, you know, star started top to bottom. You know, there's Taylor Robson, Dana Coolwell's on as well. So, um, you know, it's unreal. I'm Cohen, Mazzutia as well. It's, it's a great card to be a part of. And what happens in the fight, Isaac? And I was so close to, like, uh, squashing the narrative of just being this crossover MMA fighter that was one-punch power and, um, you know, change the narrative to being an actual boxer. I don't have an amateur pedigree. And, um, and I was close to changing that last fight. You know, you look back at my performances, 2021, and Lucas and Berridge and E-Man, I boxed perfect. And then I walk up to Zarafa like an idiot and don't throw a jab and got done. So um, I just want to right the wrong and go out and show the Australian public I can actually box. Um, like I know I can, like Blair knows I can. Like everyone that's seen me spar, Tim Zoo over 100 rounds know I can box. Um, so that's what I want to do come Saturday night and um, that's what I'm planning to do. 
Fantastic, thank you. That is our co-main event. It's Hardman and Hartas. And we'll go back now to our main event. We've got the managers and trainers of both of the main event fighters we'll have a very quick word with before we get to the fighters themselves. And firstly, Jaya Bataille's manager is Mick Francis, who's down at the end of the table there as well. Um, Mick, uh, how exciting for you that uh, this journey has finally led you and Jaya Bataille to a world title shot. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank Dean Lonigan and Wasserman for putting this on. I know how hard it's been to, to put this together over the last six or eight months, but, uh, but a testament to Dean. Dean always puts the biggest shows on in Australia, and uh, this, no doubt, will be the biggest card of the year. So thank you for that, Dean. Uh, yeah, look, I've been with Jai since 2017. Um, it's been a long journey. Uh, I've always believed in Jai. I've, I've known the, the uh, potential that he's always, he's always had. Uh, he's just needed the opportunities. <laughs> Over the years, though, we've, we've never been called out. Uh, we've we've uh, approached everyone uh, to fight. We've had a lot of knockbacks. Everyone that wants to fight Jai Fateo uh, fights for a king's ransom. Uh, so, you know, people can say that Jai hasn't tested himself. Well, Jai's fought everyone available to him, the best, the best opponents possible over the last five years. Um, you know, this is going to be exciting for Jai. Like, you know, Jai's, Jai is a legitimate fighter. He's, he's, uh, he's a fourth generation from his dad's side, third gener generation from his mum's side, so it's in his blood. Uh, you know, he's 27 years old as of today. Uh, he's the real deal, and, uh, and you're going to see... You're going to see a new champion uh, come this Saturday night. Thank you so much, uh, Michael Francis. Uh, we'll now talk to the manager of Morris Bradis, Raymond Zepps. Uh, fantastic to have you in this country as well. Um, I believe you can explain for us a little bit about the outfit of, um, of Morris Bradis today and exactly why he has come dressed as he has. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would want to say thanks to Dean and uh, to the city of Gold Coast as well for the warm reception. Uh, we feel very good here. Uh, we've been here for almost two weeks. So, I mean, the team has been here for almost two weeks. I've been a bit longer, but uh, everything has been good thus far. We finished our training camp here, and uh, now we are ready for Saturday night. Obviously, throughout the official events, and uh, then ready to go. Uh, the hat, it, it's not bullshit, uh, it, it's a real story, it's, uh, it's something that uh, actually Myers found out only when coming here. Uh, uh, Crocodile Dandy, the, uh, the character that it, the movie is based upon, uh, nicknamed Crocodile Harry, is based on a Latvian, uh, Arvids Blumenthal, who came here to Australia when he was 26 years old. Coming from Latvia, he made it big in Australia and Myers is dedicating this fight to Arvids Blumenthal, like once he did make it big from Latvia here in Australia, Maris is uh, looking forward on Saturday to making it big again. Thank you so much um, and welcome to Australia as well. It's, um, yeah, Arvid Blumenthal is the man's name, a, a Latvian soldier who apparently inspired Crocodile Dundee. So that's the inspiration being taken by Maris Bratis and his team here. We'll now move along to the trainers. Mark Wilson is the trainer of Jai Opatai, challenging for the world title on Saturday night. Mark, how have you got Jai ready for such an intimidating prospect as facing this man? Uh, well, Jai, I've never seen Jai train so hard in the last six months we've been together. He's, uh, he's had a few adversities, a few setbacks, but he's never ever thought anything about that. He's just got through whatever we had to do. His sparring's been good, and as the camp went on, he got stronger and stronger. Um, He's more focused, he's, his mindset, his self-belief is, is incredible. I've known Jai for a long time now. We go back a long way as far as in the boxing game. I took him to the 2010 Junior World Championships when he became world champion there. And I knew way back then that this kid had something special. And when I was asked to come on board in January, uh, I jumped at it, basically. It was a great opportunity for this fella. I, there's not a lot of changes, I just tried to tighten him up in a few areas, do a few things. Uh, his dad has done a tremendous job with him uh, up to now. Uh, and come Saturday night, you will see a very, very good fighter. Any chinks in the armour, do you think, of Bradis? We've seen him for so many years be so very, very dominant, but at 37 years of age, is there any chance, do you think he's slowed down? Well, 37, you're not getting any younger in the boxing game, but the bigger guys seem to go a bit longer. He's been a marvellous champion. Uh, you know, like, only lost to Usyk, you know, and now Usyk's heavyweight champion of the world. Uh, and that was a majority decision loss. 
He's, he's got all, everything. Uh, we've noticed a few little things uh, that we hope we can exploit on Saturday night. Um, but, yeah, hopefully youth will outdo the age, I believe. Thank you so much. That is Mark Wilson, the trainer of Jaya Pattaya. We move to Morris Bradis' as trainer now, Dimitri Shikolai. And a pleasure to have you here with us in the country as well, Dimitri. I uh, just wanted to get your response as to uh, how your man, Bradis, is travelling at the age of 37. So just uh, uh, our coach speaks Russian, so I'm going to translate Thank you. for him and to him. Uh, can you repeat the question? I didn't uh, hear just, those. Uh, in regards to Bradis being 37, how is he travelling at this age? Вы знаете, еще раз хотелось днем рождения поздравить и питать тебя с праздником. Отвечу на вопрос. Спасибо Австралии, очень прекрасный город, хорошие люди. По поводу вопроса, вы знаете, Марис, я работаю уже пятый год с Марисом. И я каждую, каждую подготовку я не могу понять, насколько, насколько он гибок и насколько он хорош. Он э, с каждым годом становится все опытнее, сильнее, и его возраст ему не мешает. Есть люди, которые стареют, и им становится хуже от того, что происходит. Но Марис, он такой человек, он впитывает себя как в губку и подстраивается под любой стиль боя. Вот я тренер сейчас сказал, что они э, видели бой с Усиком. Я тоже очень много раз смотрел бой с Усиком, и у Мариса есть большой опыт э, в боксировании э, с левшами в правосторонней стойке. И я не знаю, какой бой тренера и оппоненты будут смотреть, но Марис каждый раз он другой. Э, если ребята будут смотреть только на бой с Усиком, то, э, то это будет большая про промашка, потому что Марис он очень гибок, он может и вперед работать, он может и назад работать, он может и встретить хорошо, он э, отличный панчер. Поэтому будем, будем внимательны, как мы, так и оппоненты, и победить сильнейший. Maybe just a summary of that would be good. He, he just said Thank Morris you. is going to go good. You got one out of a memory. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, he's wishing Jai a happy birthday. Uh, he's uh, thanking uh, for, uh, for the team to uh, welcoming us here. Um, uh, he said uh, he's obviously reflecting to what uh, uh, Jai's coach said. And uh, uh, coach has been uh, watching Mars fights, uh, previous fights. He has worked with Mars for five years. He's watched all of the previous fights. And uh, first of all, he, he, including the fight with Usyk, which is a southpaw, uh, the case of Jai. So Mars has an extensive experience with southpaws. But the thing is, uh, what you can see in Mars' fights, uh, what he was reflecting to is that in every single fight, he's different. So it's probably a very uh, tough task for the opponent team to really understand how, how Mars is going to be boxing. because. Every single time he's doing something different. He's very deep in his skill, so he can uh, get out of his pocket anything uh, at any time. And uh, it can be very different from fight to fight. So uh, at the age of 37, uh, he's, uh, he's still getting better with every fight. Uh, it's obviously not about the, the fighting game. It's about preparing. And if you can prepare at the age of 37 uh, at the same level, I mean, uh, putting up the same loads, then it doesn't matter whether you're 37 or you're 47. It's, uh, that, that's where the, the trick is, whether you can uh, go through the training camp. And uh, Marius is, uh, uh, is as good as, uh, in, in that sense, uh, even better than he has been uh, previously uh, since coach started working with him five years ago. So he's very confident uh, about the outcome of the Saturday's fight. Fantastic. Thank you for translating Raymond's and thank you to Dimitri. I won't risk a second question there, but we'll move along <laughs> to our main event fighters now. It is the IBF Cruiserweight World Champion, Morris Bradis, and also the world title challenger, the undefeated Jai Opatire from Australia. I'll start with Jai. And firstly, happy birthday. Happy 27th birthday for today, Jai. Um, how does it feel to be just a couple of days away from something you've been dreaming about for so very long? Very excited, man. Um, you know, I've waited a long time for this opportunity. And, man, I can't wait. I feel ready. You know, I know he's a great fighter. But, you know, I feel I'm the new generation of great coming through. You know, all, all he's done, that's all in the past now. It's my time now. And what makes you so firm in that belief? I interviewed you last week, and I've never seen you so forthright in your opinion and your confidence. What has got you to this point? I've done everything right. You know, I've, I've, I've done my apprenticeship and, you know, <clears throat> July 2nd, I come certified. You know, I, I, I've done all the hard work. Everything's done, and I'm ready to walk in there. Tell me about 
the desire that you see in your opponent and the desire that you think you have to win this fight? Um, man, I, I know this is a big step up from my, you know, past competition, but, you know, my last fights, I blew them out the water. You know what I mean? It was, it was, I shown every time I was in the ring that I was levels above. I was on that world stage level. And um, I, I'm just excited to get in there and, uh, you know, show everyone. They could have dodged this fight, they could have gone another route and certainly they didn't have to come to Australia. Do you think you're being underestimated in this fight? I definitely think I'm being underestimated in a way, but I, I know he's training hard, he's ready. You know, he's, uh, he's been up the top for a long time and his coach is smart. They know not to underestimate me, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm coming for that belt. But um, yeah, we're ready, you know, we've done the hard work. I'm ready for this fight, I'm ready to become a world champion. What have you seen in Bradis in recent fights or in the demeanour he has here today that makes you confident that he's not ready for you? Um, man, I know this is going to be a tough fight, you know what I mean? I'm not expecting to go in there and just box his ears off. I'm, I'm ready for those deep waters. I'm ready to dig deep, you know what I mean? I'm ready to earn this belt. I'm not going in there thinking this is going to be easy, you know, clinic put on. I know this is going to be a war and I'm ready for it. Let's get it done. Yeah, what kind of fight? are you expecting? Uh, we've seen him in all styles of fights. You never quite know what you're going to get in a Morris Bradis fight. We've seen you, a slick southpaw boxer. What should we expect on Saturday night? Um, well, it's the same as me, you know. I, I, I'm progressing as well. I, I've, uh, you know, all the fights that he would have been watching and learning, I, I'm fighting completely different. I'm learning, I'm getting stronger, you know, getting fitter. I'm, we're just progressing into better fighters and, you know what I mean? I, We'll see what happens. I'm curious to see how aggressive he comes out, you know what I mean? Because I've got power, you know what I mean? I, I box smart, but people underestimate my power. But when he's in there, you know what I mean, he's got to second guess it. Just take yourself forward a couple of days. How do you think you're going to feel if you hear the words, and you? That's all that matters right now, man. Not, none of this birthday stuff, nothing. All that matters is hearing those words. Prediction for the fight, Jai? Tough war, man. A tough war. Let's get it done. That is Jaya Pattaya, the world title challenger this Saturday night here on the Gold Coast. And he takes on the IBF Cruiserweight Champion of the World, the best cruiserweight in the world at the moment. It is Myris Bradis. An absolute pleasure to have someone of his standing here in Australia for a fight like this. Myris, welcome to Australia. Great to have you here. How have you enjoyed your time here so far? Uh, hello, Gold Coast. Um, Gold Coast uh, meet us very warm, and I like this. Uh, when I sit here and the listening, uh, Dean and, and Kale, and laugh because um, uh, like two two big mans and speak like two small boys. No, my car <laughs> is best. No, 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 my car is best. You know, and this is, you know, I feel not so. You know. <laughs> Okay, yeah, um, but um, yeah, it's very, very funny, but it's okay. Whose car is best though, Morris? Uh, there's Jaya Pataira over there. What have you made of what you've seen of him so far? You will have looked back at, at, at some of him, I'm sure. What do you think about Jaya? Uh, in the videos, what I, uh, what I saw, I saw He's very good technique, he's fle flexible, uh, he's good speed, yeah, and he's Sopo, and uh, he's in Australia, and his hometown. It's, um, it's what, I, what I saw, but uh, what, what, what we see in the ring is something different what we saw in the, in the TV. And what should we expect from you? A lot has been made of the fact that you're 37 years of age. Any chance do you think that you might just be slowing down at this stage of your career? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I hope um, the most important for me is, you know, Enjoy me, uh, my fight, and uh, I like when fight is interesting for uh, people who watch this fight and enjoy this fight. And uh, yeah, really, because we, what we do in the ring, this is for for people who watch and love the boxing, and uh, yeah, we we do the best in the ring. 
Jai has predicted that we're going to see a war in this fight on Saturday night. What do you think we've got coming up? War is too loud because um, Je to talent, Patek. Kaj je talent? Ej, idem, no. Ok. Do you think we'll see more of a boxing match? Do you think Jai's going to try and box with you? I understand what they mean about war, but... I don't know. How I feel in the ring. How he feels in the ring. You know, like Mike Tyson said, you know, all the plans change after one punch uh, through the head, and we, we will see what kind of fight we we make uh, after the first round. You know, we need to feel each other, and then then we dancing and punching and do everything in the ring. Yeah, all the best. When you've looked to the fight, how do you see it ending, Myris? What's the conclusion of this fight? Before I need to see how they start. <laughs> we'll just finish. Um, it is Jai's birthday today. Would you like to wish him a happy birthday? Do you have any other words for the world title challenger? Um, of course, happy birthday and um, mm, congratulations to your mother and father for like for this guy who now have a fight for IBF cruiserweight. Championship uh, uh, title. Yeah. We need to fight. Uh, I think it's high level, uh, and uh, I hope uh, we show the, all the world and all the world speak about this fight and enjoy this fight. Fantastic. We might get the two main event fighters to face off if we could uh, up in front of the banner here if everyone else could move out of the way. And just to reiterate the details, so we do have a weigh-in tomorrow at midday. It'll be at the venue and then, of course, it is Saturday night that you'll see all of this action. It's the IBF Cruiserweight world title fight between the champion Virus Bratis from Latvia and Australia's own Jai Opatai. It'll all take place on main event television, available via Foxtel or KO, with the broadcast beginning at 7pm Australian Eastern Standard Time. It is a legitimate world title fight right here on the Gold Coast. Thanks to SeaWorld for having us here today, and we'll see you at the venue tomorrow for the weigh-in and, of course, for the fights on Saturday night. But right now, we'll get these two fighters, firstly to face the cameras and then to face each other. Look at each other please boys. IBF Cruiserweight World Champion Byrus Bratis and World Title Challenger Jai Opatia from Australia. That's the fight. It goes down Saturday night. You'll see all of the action on Main Event. I'm Ben Damon. I'll see you at the fights.